Earlier today, I had the pleasure of catching up with a group of cadets from the Air Force Academy, and they were fortunate enough to sit in on a session with John Penny and Rare Bear. Uh, and so this is a great learning lab for us. Uh, we can come here, we can take a look at all the different airplanes and what they've got going on as far as um, uh, different control uh, techniques, different engines, you know, their speeds, and, and right here we get into propeller performance and brake horsepower and you know, propeller efficiency and things. Uh, so it's just a great learning lab for the cadets. Are you going to fly the uh, four blade or three blade pod? Well, uh, my chief, uh, my crew chief, Dave Cornell over there, he and I are, in, he's, he's a self-educated engineer. He has all the, all the technical arguments uh, as to why this propeller blade is better. Um, this has more of an airfoil cross-section. It'll help us accelerate out of the turns as we bleed off energy in the turns. Um, that blade there has, uh, it's, a much, it's a solid blade, it's much thinner, and so um, we can run it faster without getting mock effects because mm -hmm. the tip mock is about 0.94. Um, my personal experience is uh, I've run my fastest races and fastest qualifying times with a three blade prop. And so if things, uh, after this race this year, we Dave Cornell is building up a whiz bang race engine for us that is everything's gonna be mic'd and spec precisely. And we'd like to go out and break the three kilometer speed record. This airplane right now holds a three kilometer speed record of 528 miles an hour by the previous owner. And um, uh, we know that with all the modifications we've done since he did that, we can go out and bust that and do about 550 miles an hour. We have a lot of confidence we can do that. So um, uh, we'll just have to see what happens. It's called, you know, the engineers don't always have the right answer. The, uh, the proof is in the pudding and in the, in the, uh, the performance. So I'm, I'm still trying to talk him into, let's go do some comparative flight testing, because that's really where you're gonna find it out, is, is getting the data. Right. The data's gonna tell the true story. We just haven't had the luxury of being able to do that yet. So. How the, uh, the intake on the wing, is that the only air intake for the engine? Or? That's the intake for the engine, yes. That's, that's it. It goes... Uh, on the side. It goes up, you know, there's one on the other side, it goes up into the uh, accessory section and over the top and into the carburetor. And uh, the mass flow is pretty high during a race when you're getting that horsepower. 18 cylinders? 18 cylinders, yes. 3,350 cubic inches. More than, uh, more than uh, the cubic inches on your little Toyota compact car. Per <laughs> cylinder, yeah. Each cylinder, if you divide, well, I said I got 40, 500 horsepower, you divide 18 into that, and it also probably develops more horsepower, and you guys are running in your cars. Anybody got any Corvettes? I used to own one. Corvette mode? Corvette was a big thing when I was there. Everybody had to have a Corvette. I drove a Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, let's take a walk around the airplane. Only one other modification we've done is to put uh, uh, a little bit of a, uh, an extension on the trailing edge of the skin on top which theoretically, theoretically doesn't make sense because where's the high pressure area? Is it on top or on bottom? bottom. Well, the high pressure area is, is on the oh. top because oh, the top. balancing yeah, tail, right? right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, <clears throat> yeah, so theoretically, you do better with a skin extension like this on the bottom. But that interferes. But we, yeah, we can't do that. It interferes with the movement of the elevator. So, um, uh, yeah, and, and it's all, uh, it's all manual flight controls <clears throat> with cables and uh, push rods and stuff. Here it is, top of Aircat. We've got a fair tail cone here. And as some of you have seen, this is the exhaust for the steam for the boiler, for the boil off system. Rod Lewis, the owner of this airplane, owns the Glacier Girl that's down there in the pits. He owns that silver uh, stock Aircat that you see in the pits down there. And he owns a Tiger Cat. He has, uh, Rod Lewis has a. Uh, He's got a Falcon 2000. He's got a, um, a Cessna Sovereign jet. He's got a Cessna Citation CJ2. He's got a P51. He's got uh, four Grumman Bearcats, including this one. He's got two Tiger Cats. He's got. Uh, <coughs> he's into oil and natural gas down in Texas. Now, if these guys wanted to transition into something like this in a few years after their career, what would be uh, what would be like? be similar to this that they can train on or move up to? There's not a whole lot that's similar. Uh, a stock Bearcat would just kind of give you the 
the ergonomics of sitting in the cockpit and flying something like that. Um, my background is I, after I graduated, I went to an eight, UPT, flew A7s, and, and uh, was flying F4s in the Air National Guard down here. And I had a lot of tailwheel time, and I'd, I'd gotten invited to fly a T6 and a P51 from a guy, so the previous owner, he just kind of told me about the handling qualities of it. I went out and just had, you had to jump into a high-speed taxi, and then the next thing was to go fly. So you got to get it right the first time on the landing. But, uh, so, but um, it's a, there are two airplanes that I, I, I've had, because, uh, and I was working as a test pilot for <clears throat> Learfan, which you see the picture of those two airplanes in that little, that little uh, display over there on the west wall. It was Bill Lear's latest project before he died. And um, so I was working here as an engineer and a test pilot. <clears throat> Got to know Lyle Shelton, the previous owner during the air races. He knew what I was flying in the guard and that I had uh, some tailwheel time, so he asked me to come on as a spare pilot for him. So nobody came searching for me. I, it was the right place at the right time kind of a deal. I've been, uh, had the, the fortune to be able to fly uh, Russian MiGs and things like that and uh, some other warbirds. And uh, there's two airplanes in my flying experience that every time I climb into it, uh, I treat it as a first flight. This is one of them, the Rear Bear is one of them. The other one is a MiG-21, which you guys can see an example of over here uh, on, the, on the field. So, um, are you all familiar with the MiG-21 fish bed? Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a neat airplane, but it, it keeps you busy. So, <laughs> how many of you are uh, have your licenses or your student pilot licenses? How many, how many of you are going to UPT? Well, I think everybody, everybody was except for one person. He's crossing the going Marines, Marines, sir. sir. Oh, okay. So they got the MSCs, they just don't have the And he's not doing the right basis. Well, if you're going to go to UPT, uh, four things you got to do. You got to, let's see, you have to, don't have to worry about mining your parents anymore. You got to I don't do mind that. your squadron commander, do your homework. Go to bed on time, and last thing I tell the little kids, they got to eat their vegetables. <laughs> the parents love that one. So. You all, anyway, do you have any more further questions? I have, uh, just a second. Heather! Yes. Oh. <laughs> combat tours over in the desert in the F-16 and she's one of the two first two people airborne over Washington DC on 9-11 protect uh, our nation's capital. Any other questions? Well thank you all for coming out here. I really appreciate uh, your spending the time. You man, it's very nice I will have to say we've only been through the performance phase. So we get back they've got their GR performance and then we start flying Hand qualities. Handling qualities? Okay. Yeah, so that's, you know, the stick force per Yeah, remember some of those things we talked about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so. Well, good. Uh, good. Thank you very much, sir. You bet. From the Reno Air Aces, I'm Mark Chalice for Plane and Pilot.